Hey guys, it's becoming spring here and that means it's aphid season. So let's talk about how we can get rid of them. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you aren't really sure what this channel is about, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of plants and more specifically carnivorous plants. And if that's what you're into, remember to subscribe hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. And let's just jump straight into today's video. So in the Southern Hemisphere, it's becoming springtime. All the plants are starting to come alive. They're starting to grow and develop and coming back from their dormancy, especially with carnivorous plants. But then you notice something that none of us enjoy seeing, and that's aphids. So on this plant here, you may be able to notice these little aphids sucking the life out of the new growth of this Drosera capensis here. I actually did a video on this plant yesterday to watch a time lapse of it eating some fruit flies and you can actually see how all of the aphids are scuttling all over the plants and that's a very really bad thing to see when you love your plants as much as i do when you have aphids on your plants or any infection for that matter you get lots of deformed growth such as these leaves here check how this new leaf is starting to become quite deformed oh and there's a fruit fly interesting so he's gonna have a good meal but you may notice that this leaf is starting to unravel and in quite a deformed manner, but not as badly as the Drosera regia. And many people that grow other plants such as tomatoes or roses also struggle with aphids as every season they come back and every season they they're killing your poor little plants. And that's why I wanted to make this video to just talk about a natural way to get rid of the aphids and also a chemical way, a systematic way to get rid of your aphids. So now we're in our kitchen and these are the two products that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is Margaret Roberts on the left. It's on an organic insecticide and this is Effecto Rose Care 3, an insecticide and a fungicide as well. So firstly, I want to talk about the pros and the cons of each. So the organics insecticide on the left here, this one is, as you may have been able to tell, it is organic. So it controls aphids, it controls red spider mites and white fly. It kills insects in contact and garlic prevents insects from landing on plants. And the canola kills the insects on target. And that leaves no poisonous residues. So people that are growing plants such as tomatoes, for example, may really benefit as you know, there's no poison in the food that you're going to eat, so that's obviously something good. And also say to that, you can harvest edible crops 24 hours after last application. So that just shows you, I may have aphids today, but tomorrow I don't have any more aphids. So that's just a great thing. And let's see what else it says. Not much else. So seems like this is mainly made up out of garlic extract and canola oil. So the way that this actually works is that the garlic is a preventative measure for insects. It actually scares them away as the insects don't like the smell of the garlic, just like a vampire. And the canola oil is actually what kills the insects. Insects have little, um, insects have spiracles on the sides of their body and the canola oil actually blocks up the spiracles and essentially suffocates them and causes them to die. But an issue with the organic insecticide is that it makes a big mess out of your spray bottle so this is my spray bottle and you can't really tell on video but it's very very sticky i think this is the best way to show you so as i touch it it just sticks on and I can even scrape some of the residue off. So this, this is essentially 
what kills the insects, the sticky residue that goes into their spiracles and suffocates them. And it also gets stuck on your spray bottle, just like mine. So that's why I don't really like using the organic one. I prefer to use the chemical one or rose care effecto one. And the, the great part about this effecto is that it's actually safe for carnivorous plants. It's safe for herbs. It's safe for um, sensitive plants, just like carnivorous plants in the Drosera, which really get affected the most. But obviously you do not want to use this for um, plants that you will be eating, such as tomatoes, as this is systematic. It means that it goes into the soil, into the plant, and kills the plant. So the way that we're going to prepare this is essentially the same for the organic and the chemical method. The organic method, I'll just let you know, and you can follow along as I do the chemical method. Um, it says here that you must have 15 moles or 20 moles to one liter of water. And in that it is 478 grams of garlic extract per liter and 478 grams of canola oil per liter. So the amounts of garlic extract that you have to the amount of canola oil you have is exactly the same. So it's the same ratio. So you could really go out to the store. You could get some canola oil shake it up in some water and you have an instant way to kill some some aphids and if you want you can get some garlic extract add it in there and just use that as a preventative measure so you can use either one or both and it works exactly the same as the way that we will be doing it with the chemicals so this chemical method controls thrips rust aphids black spot red spider mat and mildew i'm sure that you can read as well and the dosage is probably on the inside so here's our measuring cap here is our opaque bottle because you actually want this to not be in the sunlight as it destroys the active ingredients the uv rays and this is probably where we found the dosage instructions so let's see contact insecticide and systematic fungicide. So the reason why it's systematic for fungus is that fungus persists. Fungus creates spores, and the spores will grow again even if you kill them once. So it has to be systematic to really stay there and get rid of all these diseases. And if you have been growing um, carnivorous plants, mildew does arise, rust arrives, thrips, aphids, black spots, spider mites, all of those things do arise in carnivorous plants. And this systematic way will prevent and kill them. So it's really a, an, a great all for one kind of measure. So let's just see here, instructions in English please. Precautions, directions, okay. Spray every seven to eight days, as long as insects are there. How to use, shake well, okay. Add 10 moles to every one liter. Okay, so that means five moles to every half a liter, because I don't want a liter of this stuff. If thrips, red spider mites or powdery mold, you already present at 15 moles of product to every one liter. Okay, so 7.5 milliliters to every half a liter. Cool, so that's what we will do. We're gonna have seven and a half milliliters from this cap into approximately Half a liter of water. You can't see it on this bottle, but here is the half a liter where my thumb is. That's half a liter. So let's just give this bottle one more clean. I've been cleaning it for the past year or two uh, because this, as I say, this sticky stuff really does stay there. So let's just give it another clean and we can start mixing up our formula. So welcome to my sink. I'm just going to open up the hot water because hot water more easily helps you to get the oils off of your hands. And I'm just going to get it nice and hot, mix it around, try to scrub off some of the... Try to get off some of this oil and residue and then I will come back to you. So enjoy this.
So even though I've been washing this this bottle for as long as I can remember, there is still pieces flaking out and and it doesn't smell really good either and you can see how much foam there is. So it just shows you that it's still contaminated with the canola oil and the garlic. So really, if you're growing carnivorous plants or herbs, things that you don't need to eat, I would definitely recommend a chemical method approach, an insecticide, a fungicide, systematic version. But please, if you're gonna eat the food that you are growing, use an organic method because you don't want to injure yourself. So the bottle's clean enough that there's a steady stream of water that comes out. So when we make it musty to spray our plants, we have little droplets that will come out. So this is clean enough for now. So let's get started. So the way that these pump bottles work is that you have this plunger on the top. You may be able to see it coming down. And you have a one-way valve at the bottom, that black thing there. So just like a normal pump would work, you're pushing air out into the bottle and then the air puts a pressure over there on the black bit and keeps it shut. So you can push air in, but air can't get out because this bottle is sealed. So you're increasing, you're increasing the pressure of the interior of the bottle by pumping it. And in such, you're increasing the pressure inside the bottle. So this pressure is exerting a force on the liquid at the bottom. And when you release this trigger here, which is basically the opening of a little straw that feeds down uh, up into this area and out through here, you're able to get the liquid flying out of the straw. And this is the straw I'm talking about, this thinner one here. So apply pressure with the pump, increase the pressure inside the cavity, force the water out through the straw by releasing the, the pressure here so that the water can flow out. And that's how other things work like water guns, you know. They all work on the same premise, we're increasing pressure so you can get the movement of the fluid out. So let's just add in half a liter of water and I'm gonna use cold water. And seven and... No water was lost, you can trust me. Oh, shake it well. And really, you should be using gloves with this. Um, it came with gloves, but I don't have them anymore. I don't know where they went. Oh, smells like chemicals. So we're gonna put in seven and a half milliliters. And that's why you should wear gloves. That's uh, probably eight moles. And let's pour it in. Clean your hands because chemicals are not good for you. Put the container back into its box. Remember the UV rays destroys the active chemicals in the solution, which is what we want to prevent or else it becomes useless. Pack it away and put it back inside of your drawer or your cupboard, whatever you call it really. Just mix up the solution a bit. Put this on. I mean, you can even use one of those squirty spray bottles like one of these, one of these bad boys. You can use this too. I mean, really, it's, it's really up to you. It's just that this is my bottle and I don't want chemicals in the other bottles that we use for clothing and in the house. So let's pump this up. Then there we go, it's working. So let's go nuke these aphids.
We are now back outside and these are the plants that I have growing downstairs. My other plants are upstairs. That's why I have a ladder. And let's just kill these flippin' aphids because I really hate them. Let's see how they respond. But I wouldn't expect them to do any oh actually I, I do see them jumping. I don't know if I don't know if you saw that on the on the camera. But yeah, I can definitely see them jumping. And maybe even springtails that are jumping around. Okay, well, let's set up the camera so you can watch me spray these better. One thing to note is that your Drosera, um, especially, will sulk. Um, there's chemicals in here. I didn't check the ingredients, but there's most probably alcohols in there. And that causes the um, dew on the sundew to evaporates and becomes quite dry so in that sense the plant will sulk but it's much better that the plant just not has dew for a couple days than letting it succumb to the death um the death of aphids so oof, look how many there are there i'm not sure well you can see that let's kill them they're definitely not happy I'm literally watching them die. Okay, let's uh, do them all now. And last one of the downstairs plants. And really these plants are downstairs because I, I went away to England with my, well, with myself to see my family. And when I came back, there was, there were worms in the, in the soil of essentially all of my pots. So I had to replant them all and I thought, hey, I have so many of these Drosera capensis, as most of us do. Let's do an experiment. Let's see how well they fare. So that's what all these plants down here are growing and they're all growing in um, soil that has been infested with with worms so and I mean they're not doing that bad um, definitely these these trays here oh, you can already see them jumping around all the springtails just focus on one spot and you can see them jumping. They're not happy. Um, springtails are pretty good um, for soils, but uh, I don't really like them really for... for carnivorous plants. As they really like, they make little holes in the top of the meat and I don't like how it looks. But they, they're really not that bad. But yeah, as I was saying, these pots here uh, have Drosera bonata and many of them didn't actually survive but there are some growing back i mean here's a baby bonata here's another bonata um and where's the one that's oh here it is growing back right there so it definitely seems like they can live in this soil that has had uh, worms in it but it's just an experiment, it's just to see what would happen. So please don't put your worms in your soil. I mean, this, the worms killed a lot of my plants and yeah, don't do it. So I'm gonna go upstairs now. Wow, look at that. I have a fly, oh, it's gone now. Okay, cool, so I'll see you guys upstairs. I just got upstairs and I remembered about this this ant trail here. This ant trail's going down all the way down there and along this side here. And I noticed it yesterday. And um, I have a video on where they're actually going to. And I'll put that at, at the end of the video. And anyone that knows anything about um, ants, you can tell me like, what kind of ants these are and what do you think they're doing? Because I don't really know what kind of ants they are and I don't know what they're doing so 
I'd really like to know why they're running around over here. So let me know. Hey guys, I'm back in the Highland greenhouse and it is very warm. You can see my glasses are really misty. It's the only sad thing about having a greenhouse is that your glasses go misty. But let's let's nuke these aphids in the greenhouse as well. So really, this is what I was talking about with the effects of aphids. If you can see here on this developing plant here, you can see some aphids on the back. And this plant, poor plant is deformed. This is one of the newer leaves that have just come out. And you can see the exoskeletons, all these white spots. And it's really destroying the growth of the plant. And here we have powdery mildew, which comes every spring as well for the cephalotus. So we're gonna spray all of the plants here and kill all these aphids. So let's pump up the bottle. So you may already notice that the mildew on the cephalotus has already it's gone. It's, there's no more white fluff on it. Um, and the cool thing is that this is systematic, so it will persist. It will stay inside of the the soil and kill any more um, mildew that does arise. So I have a little bit left, and this is really the one I want to get down in the crown. Okay, well, there's a little bit left. I don't want to spray um, on all of these plants here because they aren't really affected. And so really I, I got the Regii, which is the one I was really most concerned about. And let's go look at the temperate plants that are just outside the greenhouse back there. So we are now with the temperate plants outside. Here are our pygmy drosera. And they didn't really make demo this year, except for the Pulchella. Um, but I think that's mainly because I had just got these plants from my friend in the Netherlands. And they used to be much colder there, so. I don't blame them, but they will also get, not a lot, but they will get some, some of the spray, because they do deserve it as well. And really you want to get on your Saracenias as well, because aphids love new growth on Saras, and I do not know why, well actually I do know why because they love soft, tender growth. Um, shucks, I'm gonna have to take this, this bad boy out. Yeah, make sure you spray the plant on both sides to kill anything that may arise as the new growth right there comes out. So, put you down and let's continue spraying there, everyone. Looks like half a litre was just enough for us. So I'm just gonna water these plants as well since I'm, I'm up here. So um, enjoy that. Sorry, the humidifier is in the background. So yeah, I've locked the plants up so they can't escape. This is our bodyguard here. 
um, so he doesn't let any of these small guys escape. Um, but no, in real life, the reason why there is this fence is because birds like to eat stuff and rats like to eat stuff. So I noticed that that little, um, that little um, fence does help just keep the birds out. And this is the view from the top of my roof. But I'm going to catch you guys inside now. So guys, we're back at the watering hole. And remember, wash your hands. Um, don't need to wash your bottle because you need to reapply the um, insecticide every about once every week. So I'm not going to clean this out because there's no real point. And it is finished. I mean, we literally finished it. That's all that's left. So. I'm going to put this to the side and we will reapply next dosage next week and hopefully all the aphids are gone. I'm going to play the ant trail in the next clip and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe as every week I release a new video onto the channel. So please let me know if you know why these ants are walking around on the hose pipe and what they're doing so thanks guys see you next week